In more and more of my recent project videos, I've been using a Raspberry Pi Pico, and I thought rather than going through the initial setup every time, I'd make this short standalone guide to installing MicroPython. For this, we're going to need a host computer, which could be a PC or a Mac, but I'm keeping it in the family and using a Raspberry Pi 3B. The Pico connects with a micro USB cable, and for this initial setup, we need to hold down the boot cell button while we plug it in. This automatically triggers things, the first thing we get is a removable media dialog box, and pressing OK leads us here. We can largely ignore the text file, but that other one will take us to exactly where we need to go, which is the Raspberry Pi documentation website. Here we can scroll down until we get to the MicroPython section, and clicking on the link takes us to where we want to be. As well as the download links themselves, there's a handy animated graphic that leads you through the installation process. But this is what we came for, the download link to the MicroPython UF2 file. Just make sure you click on the right one for your board. Downloading doesn't take long, so we can go and find the file in the downloads folder on the host computer pretty much straight away. Then let's remind ourselves what to do with it by watching that animated graphic again. And that's to drag and drop it onto the RPI RP2 listing in the top left hand pane where it will start to install. Again this is pretty quick and will be done in a couple of minutes. Now there's something important to notice here. That RPI RP2 removable media icon has disappeared, which begs the question, how do we get stuff on and off of our Pico? We'll get to that in a moment, but now we just need to close our windows. Then, from the programming menu, open Thony. And look, here on the left-hand side of the files pane is a space for our Raspberry Pi Pico, and it's here that we're going to manage our files. If you can't see the files pane, just activate it in the view menu, and if you can't see the Pico, exit and reload Thony. When it comes to saving a file, we're given the choice between the host computer and our newly set up Pico, and having given our yet-to-be-written program a suitable name, it will appear in that left-hand pane. And that's where we'll find it, to add and edit the code, opening our program through Thony each time. And when we're done, save the program, exit Thony, and simply unplug the cable. We'll need to plug it in again if we want to make any changes to our code. But when we do, we don't need to hold down the boot cell button. That's done its job. Just remember, you won't see any of your Pico's files on the desktop. You'll need to go through Thony and open them from there. We can now make any alterations we need, anything from adding extra code to tweaking bits we've already got, not forgetting to save our updated file. Then, when we're completely happy, we need to turn it into the program that starts automatically when the Pico's powered up, and for this we need to change its name to main.py, so MicroPython knows to run that rather than any of the other programs. And untethered from the host computer, our Pico now comes into its own, running main.py as soon as it's plugged in ready for any action to be initiated. And if you're interested in seeing what happens with my model railway level crossing lights, or any of my other Pico projects, don't forget to subscribe.